Hey, welcome back to the channel. Are you a fan of the retro games? Well, you probably are if you've been watching my channel, but aren't a fan of the way old consoles look on new TVs? I know on our handhelds, we've looked at quite a few screen exchanges that really improve the playability on the old units, but we haven't looked so much at consoles. Now, there are a lot of options out there that are either HDMI upscalers or cables that plug into the old uh, component or composite outputs that try to upgrade and upscale. But there are a few mods out there that will take data straight from the video output chip and turn it into clean HDMI video signals. And they're pretty latency free. So today, we're gonna to look at a mod from Pixel FX that goes into an N64. It has a lot of options like de-blur and scan lines and a lot of other quality of life type of improvements for the video output of an N64. So if you stick around, we'll show you how to get that done. On the bench today, we have kind of an interesting project. It's a, an N64 that was sent to me because the owner wanted an HDMI mod put into it. Um, there are several ways of getting very good HDMI out of this. Um, a lot of them are external cables that just plug into the multi uh, AV port in the back. But this particular customer wanted an internal mod and uh, we did one on his Dreamcast that turned out absolutely great. So we decided, or he decided I should say, to go ahead and do his N64. This particular one is from Pixel XF. Um, it's an internal board. It does require soldering. And after looking at the install instructions, this really isn't a beginner level or a hobbyist level install. Um, it's gonna take some fine soldering work and a steady hand and, and honestly, either very good eyesight or a microscope. Um, but I mean, if you have good eyesight, you could probably get away with just some two and a half power readers uh, for the install. Um, in this case, the original instructions wanted us to notch out the back for our HDMI port, which is a mini HDMI port, not a micro or a standard. But he had found a uh, mod that allowed the board to be moved up slightly and it's gonna replace just the, the housing. So if you have a 3D printer, which honestly, when you're working on retro systems is almost a necessity anymore, um, we were able to print out a uh, different AV hood so we'll see how these things fit. And I know I've been promising for a while to do a basic uh, 3D printing video and um, it's, it's on the to-do list. So the guys that are waiting for that one, I'm sorry, um, but we will get to it soon. Um, so as you can see, there's a, uh, a board that has everything built into it. I'm not exactly sure what this little button does um, because it's gonna be stuck inside um, completely. Um, there's a couple ribbon cables with the kit um, and this side got boogered up just a little bit I guess in packaging but I don't think it's damaged let's just take a closer look at it no it looks okay it's just a little bent we should be able to push it down and solder it um, so a couple ribbons that will snap into you know these these locations here a little piece of foam tape and the original kit came with this spacer uh, which I guess, you know, equalizes the board a bit. And uh, what you would do is notch out the bottom here of the shell. Um, but as you can see, this bit is going to give us a notch just under the AV port. So let's start by moving some of this out of our way. Being careful with these ribbons. and get this guy open. N64s use a game bit. 
<laughs> well, this is the uh, issue on working on customer equipment. It looks like all the screws have been replaced with flat screwdriver uh, heads. Um, the game bits are kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, my personal preference would be Phillips because they drop right in and, and they're easy to get to. So I'm, let me get this apart. Doesn't look like it's been too disrupted in on the inside. Um, I know the instructions say to remove all the screws, but you really don't. Um, these, there's four here, four here, and um, these four here. They actually hold uh, aluminum blocks on top of the processors and the memory, and um, there's just the, the rubber pad underneath them. So let's get out the rest of these bit. They're Phillips screws and should the board should come out. All right. Our main board's out. As you can see, the bottom tin just falls off. And here's our uh, original AV jack. And you can see we're gonna have this notch in the bottom. I'll set those aside. Um, one thing to keep in mind, these screws here on our, either the jumper pack or the expanded memory, they're longer, but you're gonna need a number one Phillips. The rest of them are number two Phillips. And like I was saying, these shouldn't have to come out, but we do have one screw hanging up. Let me get that out of place before we lose it. And that should all come off and the thermal pad should stay in place, but do not lose these. All right, from here, uh, this is where we need to be to start working on things. Oh, for anybody who has a N64 in the closet and they pulled it out or a damp basement and they think their cartridge slot is messed up. The nice thing about the N64 is that this should pull out. So you can replace the cartridge slot. <laughs> you can see there's a lot of dust in there. <sighs> I'm glad I popped that open. Uh, we'll clean back under that before we give it back to the owner. Um, <sighs> let's see. One of the first things that we need to do is honestly get the microscope out. So give me a moment and I'll be right back. All right. In the instructions, the first thing it says is, you know, certain motherboards need to have a resistor and a capacitor moved, removed. Um, it says C22 and R14, which are right there. So... Here's R14, and it's already missing on ours. And C22 is also missing. And just for reference, it's these first two right off of the, uh, that's the accessory port that was meant for the disk drive that never came to America. So there we go. So we don't have to remove those. Normally, if we'd have to remove them, it's pretty simple. These uh, surface mounts heat up your soldering iron to 400 degrees, put a little fresh solder on them, and they'll pretty much just wipe off the board. Um, you can do it with hot air or whatever, but when you want to remove them and you don't care about them afterwards, it's, it's not that big of a deal. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to solder the small ribbon cable. And you can see it says this side up. And it is going to go right over these guys here. And since we're dealing with these little ribbons, just want to make sure they're straight. Use a set of tweezers to kind of push them into place. But the easiest thing to do is to go ahead and put a little flux on each one of these.
as I've said in my other videos, flux makes everything nice. It lets the solder flow real well. And uh, it just makes for a cleaner solder joint. And in this case, it's gonna hold our, uh, hold our part in place. So because I'm using, uh, you know, we've got these ribbons, I've got this turned down now to 390. And I'm just gonna put some solder on the tip. I'm gonna hold it in place with the tweezers and just dab it. And you can see the solder just flows right in place. Just like that. A little more solder. Nice, bright, shiny joints. Now, these companies that have come out with these ribbons, have, it's just been a godsend. Um, now in this kit, we do have to solder, I believe, three wires. Um, but, you know, when you're working close quarters with some of this stuff, the, uh, the ribbons just make it so much nicer. All right, so we got that ribbon in place. Okay, and as you can see, it leaves us with some nice, clean solder joints. We just clean up our flux with a little alcohol and no problem. I believe this is gonna get bent, but we're gonna leave it straight for now. So our next one's gonna be over on one of our processors. And let's see, it is gonna be this one right here. Get a little light, maybe we can read it a little easier. Or not. I'm just not a good one to see. All right. Um, okay, so we're gonna get, if you look at the board here, we're gonna be soldering to this, this edge on this chip. So if we get it under the microscope, there we go. You can see it's marked pin one right here. And there is actually, it's kind of nice, there's a dot every fifth, every fifth pin. So this ribbon, actually that's kind of messy right there. Why don't we clean that up a bit? Just so we're not dealing with any old nasty. Okay. So there we go. So this ribbon is going to come in right here on the sixth pin. We still have quite a bit of, and you can see how they've notched this out. And we'll start up here so we can get a better look at it. And I'll pull it away in a second. You can see this ribbon actually fits a little nicer than the one on the N64. And we're gonna tack it in place. And this is actually not too difficult. I'm gonna turn it to make it a little easier on me because I am right-handed. I think we're gonna do it this way. So I can hold the ribbon in my left and I can solder with my right. All right, so here again, I'm gonna add a little flux because flux makes everything work better. We don't need a lot. Just want to coat up the edges of those pins because ideally what we're going to do is we're just we're not even going to add solder to this one because these this is such a fine pitch and we're dealing with such a thin ribbon and there is copper underneath and above and i'm just putting a teeny teeny coating of flux on this just to, just to coat up the, the copper tips. And we're gonna come in here. We're gonna find that sixth pin. We're gonna line this up just like this. 
And this one lines up really nice. I'm going to let the tip come up to temp. I'm going to make sure the tip is absolutely clean. And we're just going to not burn our finger. <laughs> we're just going to touch this. I'm going to touch it down here again. Okay. Now we're kind of tacked in place here. And you can see we're pretty much squared up. And we just pulled solder up from the edge, up from the chip. I'm going to add just a touch more flux just because I want things coated up a little better. And I want the solder to flow. And all we're going to do we're going to kind of drag solder. So we're just going to touch the tip and pull down. And as we work, we're going to literally pull solder up from the edge of the pin. It's going to get on a tip of our soldering iron. Just like that. And you can see every one of those solder joints is now made. Well, maybe not all of them. <laughs> and this is why we do it under the microscope. Because even with the readers on, I can't see, I did not notice. See, these, this one didn't flow very well. So, I'm going to put just a tad more solder paste on it. Flux. I'm going to just come in and do the same thing. Like that. Get this last one just a little bit better. All right. That's looking pretty good. Let's clean it up and we will check it with a meter. Now you don't want to leave the heat on that ribbon very long because you don't want to melt it. There we go. A little bit of the flux started to burn because I was holding still. And when the flux burns, it's never good because it doesn't flow. Now the reason this worked is because we were using a good flux. This is the Amtec that I have listed uh, listed below in the description. Um, and every one of those is made. And if we keep looking, just make sure nothing's bridged. And the nice thing is, using a microscope like this, you can visually see if, if you've bridged anything. And we have not. Okay. So that one's looking pretty good. Now there are a few, now if we come on the board here, zoom away. Let me uh, readjust some things and I'll be right back. Okay, so if we look at this chip here on the board, where are we at? Here we go. Okay, so these are going to be the only wires we're going to have to solder. And this one isn't too bad. I mean, it is fairly fine pitch, but it's not, you know, like the, like our processors or, or the memory. So I even made myself a note because <clears throat> hey, I didn't invent this kit, so I need to remember what I'm doing. So pin two, which you can see it's marked. There's one, 14, 15, 28. So pin two is this leg here. That's going to be the RC. Pin 27, which is this one here, is going to be the reset line. And pin 16 so 15, 16, this one here is going to be our common. So I guess that's our ground. So we need to get some wire. 
and anything will do. This is not high current. This is more or less data. Um, so you've seen me use a lot of this wrapping wire, which is 30 gauge. I also keep um, some 28 and some other thicker gauges, but we don't have to go very far on these. So more or less, you know, we need lengths of wire that are only a couple inches. So there's that one. There's that one. And I think the common wire is going to have to be just a little longer. And we'll go like that. And the nice thing about this wrapping wire is it's so thin, you don't even really need wire strippers to, to clean the ends. Okay, now back to what I always say. Flux is our friend. Flux makes the life of the electrician much easier. We're just gonna put a little flux there and there. And on, no, not 13. This one and this one up here. And we will go ahead and put a little flux on these. So, There's RC, there's common, and there is reset. So we're just gonna go ahead and tin those up. Here again, keeping the temperature low. Dot of solder on the tip, and with flux, transfers right down. There's no need to hold heat very long on this stuff. So there we go. So let's go back to our chip and Okay, there's one. All right, so we accidentally bridged that one because I'm at a bad angle, but no fear. And as you can see, when we have flux on there, it's easy to draw that solder right back off the pin and onto the tip of our iron. are soldered. We can bring them back around. Although I did take the, the long one. I put it in the wrong position, but that's okay. I think we still have enough. So let's see. Number 27 is going to be come back here. Number 27 is our reset. Number 16 is our common. All 
I don't like that reset. We're gonna re reset the, the reset wire. That's better. You don't wanna to tug too hard on these traces on these uh, ribbons. They'll peel right off of that plastic. Then tip one more time, get some fresh solder, and there we go. There's our RC line. So just to double check, two is RC, correct. 27 is our reset, which is this one, correct. And number 16 is our common, which is this one. Correct, okay. So, as far as I know, that's the only bit of actual wiring we need to do. Oh, we do have one more bit of wire here to deal with. Um, as I recall, this, <laughs> matter of fact, there's even a mark. So you got this white painted line and I, during the looking over the instructions it had us gently fold it so it's a fold with a just a touch of a push I don't really want to crimp it per se and then this wire is going to come over to the five volts let's see so here's our regulator and on the on the board you can see it here's our regulator um which is actually kind of funny um because you can see here, this is a five volt regulator, 78M, 17, 178, so M05. So that's a five volt regulator. And matter of fact, it's marked five volts, 12 volts in. But an N64 brick already has 12 and three volts. I wonder why, when we have six pins, I wonder why they didn't just put the five volt regulator in the brick, but whatever. So this leg is going to solder to that well, kind of a goofy angle let me double check to see how they want that done I'll be right back all right uh, I was afraid of this after taking a peek at it it's really kind of sloppy um, we're just gonna take this it's hard to even tell but um, here under the microscope you'll be able to see there's just a teeny bit of copper at the edge of that ribbon. I really wish they would have... People got... Uh, uh, the guys at Pixel FX, if you ever do a re-engineering of this board, why don't we put another solder pad on the uh, ribbon and just solder an extra wire? Um, I really don't like the way this ribbon is. I know it will work and it's probably plenty of current. Um, it's just kind of coming at a bad angle um, for this, this type of deal. So anyway, enough of that. So we're just going to come back to our old friend Flux. We're going to put a bunch right there. We're going to put some on this ribbon. It'll stick. There we go. And we are going to put a fresh blob of solder on the leg of this regulator. As soon as our soldering iron comes to temp. I think it's going to make it easier to solder. It's ugly, but grab this. Make sure we're still in the microscope. Yeah, that's going to work. Yeah, I don't like that at all. I mean, it's soldered, but these ribbons are thin, 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 thin. Okay, neither here nor there. Okay, so our ribbon's in place. All of our connections, all of our solder connections are done. Um, I know on the instructions, they had one more check for us. I already 
Well, we should clean it a little better. A lot of dust. But it's nice. This one isn't corroded or anything. So now you don't have to worry about which way is which. There's actually a set of missing pins. And um, you can see here, um, you know, there's these guys missing here. So you just got to line them up and push it back in the board. Like that. All right, so the rest of this is going to be fitting to the shell. And here's our board. And let's move our tins out of the way for a minute and get our bottom shell. I think we're gonna have to do something with this bottom tin. We might just get rid of it. I'm not sure. We'll double check that in a second. All right, so, like I said, this is the spacer they gave us originally. I guess we don't need the microscope anymore. All right, so, so that's gonna fit in there. And that's gonna leave our board to fit in Move this piece of metal for now, just so we can fit things better. Okay. And our board will fit in like that. But even with this spacer, it seems a little, a little low. Hmm. This is the one that was supplied to me by the owner, so I may have to do a little research to see exactly how this guy fits. But let's go ahead and look at our top shell and see what it looks like. Well, to me it looks like it's still dropping down. It should drop down a little bit. Let me verify a few things before I start cutting into a chassis and I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that interruption. Um, and this is the reality of, of working and modding systems is that when you misplace things, ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> um, no, uh, when, as you modify and, and do things, sometimes there's revisions or changes. Um, like I said, this particular one came from Pixel XF, FX, whatever. Yeah, Pixel FX, sorry. Um, and the original mod, I guess, was called Ultra HDMI. So this particular model came from Thingiverse. So, you know, it's a free to use model. So one thing is when you get into 3D printing, is you know calibration of the machine sometimes you can make a print that looks absolutely fabulous but when you go to measure it it's actually the wrong size maybe not by a lot but enough that if you make a part it doesn't just automatically fit where it should so <clears throat> one of the things i wanted to make sure is that you know we we did have a properly fitting part a, that it fit in our chassis correctly. Um, the other thing is we obviously still need to get around our original port. So, and it fits absolutely perfect. You know, um, I spent a lot of time calibrating my machines to make sure the, uh, the parts are, are correct. So I knew everything was fitting correct with the part. And what I was seeing and this is just things that you got to keep in mind when you're modifying, is that the plate here that uh, supports this board, when the HDMI port came onto the plastic here, the board wasn't being supported. It was actually tipped up. And then when I put this down, there was a bit of a gap. So somewhere along the line, 
either this board thickness has changed um, from different manufacturers, the HDMI port design has changed, although this one is extremely thin, so I couldn't imagine that. So even though this is the no cut, what I wound up doing is just taking the, the slightest little notch off. We're talking a millimeter, millimeter and a half. Um, matter of fact, and if we put our factory one back on, it would pretty much just look like a, a nick in the plastic. <clears throat> but hey, it needed it so this would fit. I wasn't gonna put any stress on our board. And now you can see it drops right in. It's sitting nice and flush on, on that backing plate. And if we set our hood in place, we can see it fits nice and nice and square and snug, and it's gonna hold it nice and tight too. Okay, so that problem was solved. Oh, I just noticed something. I'll show you, I'll show you something in just a moment. Um, as I was looking, this little piece of foam is actually to keep this from shorting out, and it wants us to cut it thin. So we're just gonna take some scissors and cut it in half, more or less. And stick it on those ports, those pins. There we go. Okay. So that's that. That's that. Now we can look at our actual parts. So, yeah, this is going to be turned this way slightly. And here again, they have a little white line about where they want you to fold it. So we're gonna fold it to get it out of the way. Our hood can go in place. And we can drop this whole assembly in. Like that. I guess we should put our screw mounts back in place. I just knocked them out for ease of moving around. Okay, why does this feel so snug? Now, here again, when you're modding, Never force anything. Okay, I guess it's because that chunk of foam I put underneath there. So that's good, we're fine. Um, as said earlier, this is the 3D printed part that came with the kit and we're not gonna be using it. So we're gonna be putting it aside. Okay, so that's that. All right, sorry about that. It's not after double checking because it just did not seem right the way it was starting to twist. The checker is gonna go in which means the pins are gonna be facing out, which made more sense for this connector anyway. Okay, and once the ribbon's in, make sure that bale's pushed down. That looks a little better. So it's gonna sit sort of like this underneath the shielding. The next thing we're probably gonna to wanna to do is get this other ribbon tucked in just so it's not hanging out. Um, I'm not exactly sure the easiest way to do it. It's kind of in a bad spot. And I know this isn't gonna be the greatest of shots, but make sure the bale's up. Push it in. My head's probably in the shot and then push that bail down. That wasn't too bad. Curved tweezers, twisted under. Um, just like with this one, the contacts are gonna go away from the bail. Um, so, all right, so it looks like we're more or less kind of where we need to be with this. 
Okay, so all of our solder connections are made. Our ribbons are hooked up. Oh, it does make mention to verify that we're not shorted to ground. Um, but it said put a cartridge in and a jumper pack. This is an actual memory pack, but it's fine. And I'm gonna grab our brick, unplugged. I'm just gonna stick it on the board and grab our meter and go from the three volt rail, which is off this cap. Good, we're not shorted. Those ones are ground, that's the cap. All right, so we're good. We don't have a short. So we can get rid of all this stuff for now and move on to our next step. I'm just gonna move this little wire out of the way just so it isn't anywhere where the tins may come to haunt us later. All right, now in reassembling the console, it does say to add a little bit of tape. Just to make sure we're not gonna short anything. Looks like just off of the screw here. And about there. All right. Now there are a few options. If you have a PAL uh, system, uh, you can close this jumper. And also there's a way, if you do have a PAL and you wanna play region free, you can uh, use this to set the clock, but I don't, the customer didn't ask about it, so I'm just gonna leave it alone for now. It can always be added in back later. Uh, it will require adding one more wire uh, and lifting a leg on our clock chip. So, our tins are gonna go back down. We need to be very careful to get this ribbon into that opening there. No problem. Okay, and these two longer screws that we took out are gonna be on R cartridge slot. We'll snug these down. Just take a peek how everything looks like it's fitting. Okay. So our shell's fitting pretty good. Our ribbons are in. Nothing seems pinched. Still can move underneath the tin, so it's not, the, the ribbon isn't pinched by the, by the steel. Or, yeah, well this is steel, this is aluminum. So I think that's good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put all the screws back in and I'll be right back. All right, I got all the screws back in. Uh, you can see all the Phillips screws are back down in and around. Our top tin is on. Um, as far as I can tell, we're leaving this bottom tin off. It didn't ask me to cut anything or trim anything and it was very much gonna interfere with the board. So, um, to be very honest, uh, the bottom tin is just for RF shielding, but all the heat sinks and everything are, are you know, on top and, and in correct position. So, that leaves us with trying this out. So, oh, I, one thing I wanted to show you is, um, a lot of people think the N64 is region locked, and it kinda is, but it, kind of isn't. Um, if you ever look at the cartridge, there's two little notches, and on the Japanese ones, the notches are in a different place. So I noticed this while the shell was sitting over there, and I said I'd show it to you in a second, is there's a 3D printed cartridge tray, ow, <laughs> you know, where it, where it holds the, the cartridge. 
And in this particular one, I don't know if we can see down in there or not, there's no notches. Things like this can be found on Thingiverse and you know 3D printed, uh, fairly simple. And that tray allows the, uh, the user to, to use any region cartridge they want. Um, it was a pretty simple lockout. So anyway, to test this thing, we're gonna need a cartridge. We absolutely need a jump pack or expanded memory. Um, this memory kind of stacks in series and you have to close the end of the memory. So that's either with more memory chips that has the closing circuit built into it or just a jump pack. So anytime you have these apart, you gotta do that. And of course we need our brick and I need to plug it in, make sure our switch is off. And I already plugged a mini HDMI cable into our TV. All right, so let's get us over to HDMI 2. And keep our fingers crossed. I never like to have to test things where metal has been clamped back down onto the circuit board, but let's see what happens. Hope the smoke doesn't come out. Got a light. Oh. There we go. So right now, no controller, obviously. This has got the, coming out the HDMI cable, not the multi-AV. And you know what? It does look much sharper. Um, I know this particular mod has a bunch of uh, settings in it. Uh, I don't happen to have a controller handy um, to get into the menu system. But, uh, you know, perhaps I should go grab one and, and we can investigate that. Give me just a minute and I'll be back. All right, I grabbed a controller, should be coming up again. And I pulled up the instructions on how to get into the menu. Now, if you're wondering, I left the shell off just because if I needed to get back into it, that's just less screws to have to deal with. All right, so to get into the menu, supposed to hold the left and the right, D-pad right and C right? C right. All right, let's see what happens. Hey, and we got it. There it is, Pixel XF, FX. I don't know why I keep saying it backwards. So we have Scalar, Scan Lines, what do we got? Left to Exit, R to Select. Post Processing, Output Resolution, Advanced Video. Oh, we gotta see what that is. Frame Lock, Clock Mode, all right. Output resolution, we're in 1080 right now. Post-processing, de-blur on. Now that is actually a, a complaint that a lot of people with the N64 have, is that the N64 actually double filters the pixels, which is why an N64, no matter what TV you put it on, looks blurry. Um, so we obviously can turn off the part of that blur and have some crop, scan lines, off. Yeah, I never like to add the scan lines into the retro stuff. All the handhelds have that on it now and I think it just looks bad. Scalar. And um, of course we can change the scale. So there you have it. There is the Ultra HDMI or Pixel FX N64 HDMI digital install. Um, it wasn't too bad. Um, a hobbyist with a good steady hand and very good vision and a jeweler's loop. These come in handy when you want to check solder joints. Um, could do this one. Um, if you have a 3D printer, all the better. Then you can, uh, you know, print your, your hood and um, make it a little cleaner install if you don't want to really uh, chew up the uh, shell. But there it is, that's the, full, that's the full install. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button because it really does help us. Um, if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and ask them down below. 
I know most of my mods come from Handheld Legend, but I know this particular one did not. I think it was ordered direct. I will verify and I'll add an e a link down below. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on that next video. Thanks.